Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you this case of a patient who had negative dysphotopsia in the other eye, and I put in a single piece acrylic lens into the capsular bag. And so this patient returns stating that she had these symptoms but wanted to have surgery in the other eye. And so I decided to put in a three-piece intraocular lens into the capsular bag in the reverse optic capture configuration. And so I'll be able to show you the technique that I used to achieve this reverse optic capture. So I use a cotton tip to center the eye and then use a corneal marker to help me center and size my rexus. I'm using the cotton tip to steady the eye and I'm making my paracentesis incision on the right side and then the left side. And I'm making sure I'm parallel to the iris plane, which will create a nice corneal shelf, which will allow me to achieve a self-sealing incision. I'm injecting intracameral lidocaine and then some intracameral epinephrine. This patient had a little bit of a floppy iris. So I'm injecting some dispersive viscoelastic to fill the anterior chamber. And this is the triplanar corneal incision. I make a vertical groove. Place the blade into the deep part of the groove, tunnel through the cornea, and just shy of the angle there on the blade, I go in, turn the eye towards me, and enter. If I tunnel all the way to the angle of the blade, the height of the incision will be too much. After I make the incision, I inject some more viscoelastic to deepen the chamber and flatten the anterior capsule. I feel like this does give me some added protection and allows me to have more control of the rexus. So I puncture the center of the capsule, grab the right edge of the tear to create a flap. Because I'll be doing a reverse optic capture, it's very important to make a small size rexus. So you can see this is a very small size rexus. If the rexus is big, it's a little bit harder to do this. And so I'm making sure I make a small size rexus. And making a small size rexus does not adversely affect the cataract lens disassembly technique for me personally. And so whether I have a small rexus or a large rexus, this does not affect the cataract surgery at all for my technique. So this is a capsular fornix hydrodissection technique. I place the cannula out to the contralateral equator under the rexus edge, get a nice wave, decompress the bag, and then turn the cannula tip to the right side pointing down. You can see the lens spins nicely now. So you'll be able to see that again through this small rexus. It doesn't really affect how I do the lens disassembly with the double chop and cross chop technique. I lift the incision with a chopper, go in with irrigation off to minimize decimase trauma, removing the surface epinuca material, place a chopper underneath the rexus edge out to the equator, point to phaco tip vertically sub-incisionally, crushing and dividing the lens by bringing the instruments together, placing the chopper underneath the right heminucleus, pulling it centrally toward the phaco tip and dividing the right heminucleus. Lifting the first quadrant up with some high vacuum, emulsifying the lens piece, getting underneath the second quadrant, pulling it up out of the bag, grabbing it with some high vacuum, and then emulsifying the lens piece. Turning the second heminucleus in front of me, placing the chopper around the lens piece, pulling it centrally toward the finger tip, and then dividing the lens piece using some vacuum, grabbing that third quadrant, and then emulsifying the lens piece after breaking it up into smaller pieces. Turning the fourth quadrant in front of me, placing the chopper around the lens piece, pulling it centrally towards the finger tip, and then emulsifying the lens pieces. So this is the final piece there of the fourth quadrant. Use a little vacuum to lift it up, crushing it between the chopper and the finger tip, and then emulsifying the lens piece. You can see that was a fairly soft lens. So the endonucleus is gone, removing the epinuclear material, grabbing the anterior portion, and it starts to tumble out. I take the chopper out, push BSS in, take the phaco tip out and go in with the INA handpiece, adjusting the sleeve, starting to polish underneath the rexus edge, looking for any cortical material. 
Again, this is under cortex mode. Very carefully, again, I'm not really using high, high vacuum. I'm using foot pedal control as I go underneath the rexus edge because I know it's fairly clean. And then I switch to polish mode to remove the lens epithelial cells under the rexus edge. I can see some fine corner material in the sub incisional area. So I turn the port down, polishing on the posterior capsule surface in the sub incisional area. You want to disengage the cortical material from the posterior capsule in the sub incisional area because it is quite adherent. And so when I do the cortical flush technique afterward, it will be more likely to come out because it's not stuck to the posterior capsule component of the cortical material there. The adhesions are primarily in the fornix now. Once I'm satisfied, I place the BSS cannula through the paracentesis, point the tip into the subincisional capsule or fornix, and I start to pulse the BSS. You can see there's quite a bit of cortical material that's starting to get loosened. And then I use the INA handpiece to grasp the edge of the cortical material. There's a little bit more in the subincisional area on the right side that I was able to pulse, and then I grasp it with the INA handpiece again. So I inject some cohesive viscoelastic to fill the bag. And then I'm going to sweep on the left side first. As I'm sweeping, you can see it does mobilize some cortical material that was hidden in the subincisional area. and then I'm gonna sweep on the right side. Once it's nice and clean, I'm gonna to have to widen my incision to accommodate the three-piece intraocular lens. I'm using my paracentesis blade to widen the incision. So I'm placing the three-piece intraocular lens into the capsular bag. I Position the bevel facing to the left so the leading haptic comes out planar and goes within the bag. As the optic is delivered, I rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, which allows the optic to be delivered flat. And you want to make sure the trailing haptic comes out pointing to the right. I'm using the Maltzman to dial the trailing haptic into the capsular bag. I place the INA handpiece in with irrigation off, go underneath the lens, remove all the viscoelastic from within the bag and underneath the lens as well. So this is the reverse optic capture technique. I have the INA handpiece under the lens. I'm placing the cannula on top of the lens and I'm gonna very gently pull the optic towards me and I'm trying to gently tilt it in such a way that the part of the optic that's away from me will be prolapsed anterior to the rexus edge, as you can see right there. And so now the distal optic is anterior to the rexus edge, and the proximal side is also anterior to the rexus edge, which is very easy to do since you're just pulling out the INA handpiece, which allows you to keep that capsule rexus underneath the optic. So now you can see the cat eye configuration of the capsule rexus. The optic is in front of the capsule and the cat eye configuration is being held by the optic haptic junction. I use the INA handpiece and the cannula to control the lens and I gently tilt it so that the edge of the optic away from me is tilted upward and it pops anterior to the capsule. Once I get the distal optic up anterior to the rexus edge, the optic towards me is very easy to prolapse up anterior to the rexus edge. So you can see the cat eye configuration of the capsular rexus now. The optic is now anterior to the capsular rexus. This patient saw me post-op day one. 
and she was very happy because she noticed that there is no more shadow in this eye compared to the other eye. And so we'll discuss whether or not she wants to have anything done about the other eye as far as doing an IOL repositioning or exchange to reduce the negative dysphotopsia. So I hope this was helpful to you, and I thank you for your attention.